Hello, my friends. It's been a long time. I hope you will forgive my extended absence and I will spare you the requisite life work spiel. Today, I am finally here to share with you my entire New York City collection. The irony is that because it took me so long to film this, I'm actually gonna be leaving New York in two weeks to go work in San Diego for a couple months, so that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I will, of course, share with you the fragrances I do decide to bring on that trip. But anyway, that's an entirely different story. Let's stop dilly-dallying and we'll jump right in. This will actually start up here. These are two from Christopher Brosius's line. CB I Hate Perfume. They have really interesting water perfumes and these are really realistic. So all his fragrances are super uh, photorealistic and these are really, really nice. I don't know if they still make these. These are actually very, very old. I used to be obsessed with Christopher Brosius and he has a little boutique here in Brooklyn that I used to frequent. Um, these two are really beautiful. Memory of Kindness is kind of like a tomato leaf sort of one. It's beautiful. It's based on his grandmother's kitchen, I want to say. So it's like tomato leaf, a vine, very green, beautiful scent. Love that one. This is Swiss Arabian's Oud Macnoon. It is a really rich, luscious, incredibly unique Oud fragrance. I haven't quite smelled anything like that. I will talk about that one a little bit more in depth later on. This is Palo Santo from Carner Barcelona. It actually has very little to do with Palo Santo, the wood. It's more of a milky, almost borderline gourmand woodiness. It has a uh, a hint of stale wood, not in a bad way, <laughs> in a very actually comforting, intoxicating sort of way. I really like that one. This is Rima 11, also from Corner Barcelona, another more darker, spicy floral scent, really interesting. It's supposed to be reminiscent of Dries Van Noten from Frederick Mall, which is one of my favorite fragrances that I unfortunately don't have a bottle of. It's long discontinued. And this is Mugler's Over the Musk, which was one of my unicorn fragrances that I recently acquired. Really nice, clean, um, seductive, clean, seductive, clean kind of musk. This is Costume National Ohm, the Parfum. That's a recent acquisition as well. Whoops, don't know if you can hear that outside. Um, it is a cardamom version of the Ohm Eau de Parfum and it, it shares the DNA, it's very clearly a flanker, but it's a little more milky, almost like um, almost like coconutty, spicy, woody fragrance. Very, very beautiful unisex fragrance. We move over here. This is Shalimar Souffle Intense, which is one of my favorite scents as well. From the Souffle line, this is definitely my favorite one. This is Galleria from Milano Fragrance, a really beautiful, light, irisy leather scent. It's almost translucent. It's somehow buttery and translucent all at the same time. Really nice. This is Hermes L'Ombre de Merveille, which you've heard me talk about uh, in my aquarium date video. This is Goutal's Etoile du Nuit, another lipsticky, irisy, sweet, kind of woody, lipsticky fragrance. Moving down here are the Bottega Veneta's in my collection. We have Essence Aromatique, Eau de Velour, and the original Eau de Parfum. If I had a signature scent, which is never going to happen, it would definitely be Bottega Veneta. The Essence Aromatique is more of a, well, an aromatic herbal type of fragrance, more like a summer freshy type of fragrance. That's, it's reminiscent of Shalimar Cologne, actually. It's a nice one. This is, I think at this point, my Holy Grail Iris, Olfactive Studio Iris shot, which is an incredible, incredible, buttery, rich, leathery iris that is almost delectable. It's so soft and smooth and suede-like. I absolutely love it. It's got an almond accord in there as well, I believe, and it is just stunning. Oh, I had to adjust my knee there. This is Cartier La Panthère. This is a very luxe, 
bright Chypre fragrance. Back there we have Mustacartier Gold, which is an Osmanthus version of Mustacartier. You know I love that DNA. Uh, the DNA that's in Crazy Critzia and Obsession. This is a more a luxe and smoother version of all of those. I really, really like that one. This is Olympia Intense. I'm sure you've heard too much about this fragrance. It's nice. It's not my favorite thing, but it's sort of like a guilty pleasure, enjoyable, enjoyable scent. That is Zara Golden Decade, which is a a cross between YSL Lieb and Lieb Intense, really nice. I, I like that one a lot. That's a comforting fragrance. Over here we have YSL Lieb itself. This is Mon Guerlain Floral, which is I think my favorite Mon Guerlain flanker at this point. There's Mitsuko Eau de Parfum, who needs no introduction at all. One of my very favorite fragrances. Uh, I find it pretty wearable. I know that that's a polarizing fragrance for some. This is Chanel Allure, the Eau de Parfum. This is one of my one of my nostalgic and oft repurchased fragrances. That was my signature for many many years. This is Chanel Number no. Five Eau Premier, really beautiful, lighter, more vanillic version of Chanel Number no. Five. That is Coco Mademoiselle Intense. This one, um, you can see it has the wrong cap. I got this from a friend who got it on Mercari and I have questions about its authenticity. It smells kind of like it, but also kind of not. So uh, I don't know what's going on with that, that bottle there. This is Cabo Chart Cherie, a really almost strawberry-like fragrance. Has very little to do with the original Cabo Chart, but it's really growing on me. I really do like that. It's comforting, sort of a crawl into bed kind of scent. It shares some DNA with uh, Miss Dior. Back there we have, let's see if you can see it. Uh, Cabo Shard, which you guys also know is one of my Holy Grail fragrances. Absolutely love this one. Classic, beautiful, rich smelling fragrance. Down here we have Lete en Deuce from L'Artisan. That's a linden blossom kind of scent. Really nice for summer. Smells like fresh linens. This is Philosophy Pure Grace, the Eau de Parfum. I actually got this through my influencer. It's really nostalgic for me, I like it. My mom used to wear this fragrance, so it feels very comforting to me. This is Comme des Garçons, Odor 53. Oh, it's such a fun one. It kind of is reminds me of Memoir d'une Odeur and that kind of scent profile. They're totally different concepts, interestingly enough. This one, the concept on this is so much about industrial smells and Memoir d'une Odeur is of course, based on chamomile, but uh, very interesting, interestingly similar scent profiles. This is Zadig and Voltaire Just Rock, which is basically, this is her with a jasmine note. I really, really like it. That is Paco Rabanne Metal that you heard me talk about in my spring fragrances video. I still have not fully mustered up the courage to wear it out. Uh, this is <laughs> Cody's Exclamation. Doesn't everyone need to have this in their collection? This is also obviously a nostalgic scent for me. Used to wear that as a kid. This is Oscar de la Renta L'Esprit d'Oscar. This is basically L'Eur Bleu Light. It's a really soft, fluffy version of L'Eur Bleu to me, and I love to wear that out of the bath to bed. That back there is Latafa's Opulent Musk. It's meant to be a dupe of um, Spirito Fiorentino. I don't know about this. <laughs> uh, the bottle's very luxe. I think I'm just, yeah, whoops. I think I'm just over that scent profile. Let's rescue this little guy. Sorry, exclamation. Yeah, so Opulent Musk, I think, might eventually go. Over here we have Prada Amber, the Eau de Parfum. Um, really nice patchouli heavy fragrance, kind of similar to Coro Mandel. That's Zadig and Voltaire. This is Love, which is another one I really, really like. It's again, basically this is her, but with a ginger and violet note. I really like that one. These are my little Narcissos, Narciso Rouge, Narciso Poudre, and Narciso Ambre back there. Beautiful musk fragrances. I'm sure they need no introduction. 
This is Dolce & Gabbana Parfum, which has been on my chopping block for a long time, and I think it's probably gonna go. It's just not doing it for me. Uh, that is Nina Ricci Rose like, Stars. Rosy, beautiful, affordable, really nice fragrance. I like that one a lot too. Lancome Idole L'Entance, which I have been reaching for quite a bit. It's a very luscious version of Idole, and Idole itself is not a fragrance I love, but this one is really, really, it's addictive in a way. I really like that. Down here we have Alexander McQueen's Kingdom, which I absolutely adore. I know that people have a lot to say about this fragrance. It's a cumin balm. It smells like body odor in a way that I really love. It's long discontinued and I'm treasuring this little bottle. I, I really love this fragrance. Um, <laughs> but again, I, I think I kind of like body odor type of fragrances. Not necessarily even to wear, but I appreciate them. Uh, this is Corrèze Saffron Auris, a really nice natural smelling fragrance. Back there is uh, Elizabeth and James Nirvana Amethyst. It's kind of on my chopping block too. I just don't really like this scent profile anymore. I'm kind of kind of over it. It's a nice fragrance. I know that it's widely loved for good reason, but it's just not my scent profile anymore. This is our Moff's Club de Nuit Intense, which is a dupe for Tom Ford's Noir de Noir. Noir de Noir used to be one of my signatures as well, and I didn't want to shell out the bucks for another bottle of it, so th this does the job. It gets the job done. Uh, this is Samsara, the Eau de Toilette from Guerlain. What can I say about this? This is just stinking gorgeous. I love Samsara. I get so many compliments on this fragrance too. Uh, also, the Eau de Parfum as well. And that is Roberto Carvalho's Nero Assoluto, also kind of on my chopping block. I like it a lot out of the bottle, but it does something weird and sour on my skin. I'm going to keep trying it in different weather and see if I can find a time that it works for me, but um, yeah, it's really a nice, nice fragrance. This is just purely a skin chemistry thing. This is Alien Essence Absolute. I'm sure I don't need to say much about this one. A beautiful version of Alien that I really, really like. That is Bulgari Black back there, which was a signature of mine for a time. It's a focusing, uh, yeah, I'll just grab it. <laughs> Bulgari Black, <clears throat> beautiful burnt tire kind of scent. Absolutely love this one. Really a standout, very, very unique burnt vanilla kind of uh, very uh, non-foody vanilla tar and tires and asphalt in a really beautiful way. Over here we've got Mugler's Aura and Aura Sensuelle. Beautiful rhubarb scents. I prefer the Sensuelle because it has a really lovely gardenia note um, that makes it quite well, sensual. <laughs> Very luxe and sensual. This is Balenciaga Paris back here. Really nice violet, powdery, rooty. Uh, very fresh, perfect for spring. Uh, really nice everyday wear scent. This is my second bottle of Balenciaga Paris. We have Paco Rabanne's Ultraviolet and a backup of the vintage version. This was my signature in high school and therefore holds extreme nostalgic value. I don't care what anyone says about this fragrance. I love it. Damn all the naysayers. I love this. Uh, this is Bulgari Omnia Amethyst in a big bottle and a little travel bottle. I really like this. It's just an easy reach lilac musky scent. It's so easy to wear. A uh, compliment getter for me. I think it just works really well with my skin chemistry. Dior Pure Poison. I mean, you know, what do you need to say about Pure Poison? It's just another really beautiful, easy reach, musky, cleanly sensual type of fragrance. Back there is a vintage bottle of Thierry Mugler's Angel. That bottle is from, I want to say, 2006. It's kept really well. I'm trying to hoard the vintage formulations. The current ones are just not my jam, you know, man. Moving down here, these two uh, shelves down here are kind of like my nostalgic corner. <laughs> And ones that I don't reach for and, and just nostalgia. A lot of these fragrances are borderline off 
but I keep them for nostalgic purposes. This is Angel Aqua Chic. This is Angel Osucre. This one is just here because I don't reach for it that much. It's, um, what is it called? Delicious Delights Cool Swirl, I think, something like that. It's like a pistachio, pistachio ice cream type of scent. It's really nice, I just don't wear it. It's a comforting scent, but I, yeah, I just don't wear it. This is Allure Eau Fraiche Sant. Excuse these bottles. I used to carry my perfumes in my purses and they would just get all banged up. Um, but this was like a hair and body mist version of Allure that I don't, they don't make anymore, but I just keep it because it was from a uh, memorable time in my life. This is Bronze Goddess. Um, this is the body oil version. Again, I just keep it because it's nostalgic to me. One day I'll probably get rid of these because I don't want to be too bad of a hoarder. Back there is Demeter Eggnog. Uh, that's just one I don't really reach for. These are kind of ones that I don't reach for. This is Come to Our Sud Pacific Matin Kalin. Matin Kalin. I don't know. It's a sugar milk fragrance. I really, really love this one. It just smells like pure condensed milk. <laughs> I know that it is gross to some people. Some people compare this to like baby spit up or whatever, but I just, I love it. Um, it's really comforting to me, so I'll wear that to bed sometimes. This is Vanille Givre des Antilles, excuse my horrific pronunciation, from La Maison de la Vanille. I got this because it's supposed to be reminiscent of Angel and I wanted to try it out. Uh, it's relatively new, so I'm still playing with it, but my initial impression is that no. <laughs> this is Lolia Wish, which you also heard me talk about in my spring fragrances video. Sugared pastille fragrance, really just fun powdery sugar fragrance. Over here, this is my like, oh, excuse my Wi-Fi system back here. Um, <clears throat> This is my ultimate unicorn holy grail fragrance. This is Hervé Leger from Hervé Leger. It is, man, like, I don't even know how to describe it. This is my favorite fragrance and it is discontinued as hell. And I just don't understand why this is a stunning, stunning scent. I don't even have words for how to describe this fragrance, but I absolutely adore it. And if you guys know of a dupe or anyone who makes anything that remotely resembles this fragrance, please let me know. I have not been able to find anything at all that does what this fragrance does for me. So that's Hervé Leger from Hervé Leger. That is Stila Midnight Bloom. I don't even know why I still have this. Uh, this is from like 2004. I don't know why I still have this, honestly, um, but there it is. <laughs> this is Diesel Plus Plus Feminine. Again, excuse my beat up crazy looking bottle. It's because I used to carry it in my purse for whatever godforsaken reason, but this is a really fun, it, it's like a, in a milk bottle, but it doesn't really give milky vibes. It's more like a, a woody kind of I guess sort of lactonic woody fragrance it's just really comforting I really like that one a lot it's unique this is Marc Jacobs Marc Jacobs the like gardenia tuberosi version I really really love this as well um, this was also my signature for a while and yeah beautiful fragrance I like it um, back there Emporio Armani she I'm sorry, the lighting is terrible down here. Emporio Armani She, again, it's all beat up because I used to carry my fragrances in my purse. Stupid, stupid. Um, this is Christian Dior's Remember Me, which is a really nice, floral, fresh, green fragrance. It's really, really pretty. Um, also discontinued. And this too, oh man, this is such a good, clean, peachy fragrance. Uh, this is Fresh Sake musky, peachy, just like a, 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 a heavy your skin but better kind of scent. This also worked so well with my skin chemistry. Massive, massive compliment getter for me. Devastated that it's discontinued, but what are you gonna do? And last but not least, we have Sonia Raikiel. I bought this off Mercari um, just for nostalgic reasons, really. My 
my mom used to have a bottle of this and I would steal it from her <laughs> uh, back when I was a teen, young, preteen. And so, yeah, just nostalgic memories for me. So that is Sonia Rekia with this funny rhinestone edition of this t-shirt bottle. So over here is where I keep the majority of my travel sprays and samples and minis. All those boxes you see back here are full of samples. And these are all also full of samples. And this little tackle box here is also full of samples that are ostensibly alphabetized, but I don't know how well at this point they are actually alphabetized, but um, yes. Let me know if you actually want to see what's in here. I'm not going to pull it out right now, but yeah. <clears throat> Over here is all of the scent bird things. We've got Exit the King, Carner Tardes, Amalaj Beach Hut, 1725. Noel O. Balthon. I like to write them on the top so I can sort of grab them, uh, you know, easily. And a little terracotta travel spray. This is Mon Guerlain Intense. This is Memoir d'une Odeur. A couple of uh, little Middle Eastern type oils. I'm sorry the lighting's, lighting's kind of bad. Hopefully I can try to fix it in post. Um, and what's this? his store to perform nor patchouli oh you can't even see what that is breath of god which i really love um okay anyway here's some minis we've got lieb twilly dolce garden a little mini of Zhivago 24k which i think is just the cutest thing and then uh la petite romaro fresh flower bomb these are a couple of um Mon Guerlain minis, so it's the EDP, the Floral, the Eau de Toilette, and just the regular one. Omnia Amethyst, Costume National Scent, Lanvin Oxygen. I'm sorry, it's not focusing. There we go. Chloe. Um, yeah, I love minis, in case you couldn't tell. I just think they're so cute. This is an amber paste, I think, and, and an Egyptian musk thing, and these little paste type things. Uh, here we have a couple of oil perfumery guys. These are some sprays that I just made on my own, some experiments. And my Terry Mugler minis. And what else? Oscar de Laurenta ring, some more samples in there. And uh, yeah, these are all, all samples. So that's, that's this section. So these are the decants that I bring with me when I travel. These are all fragrances that are in my other collection that I wanted to have just like a little bit with me and I didn't want to bring the whole bottle. These, you can see, not a perfect system. I got to find better decant bottles because some of them do leak. Some of them are fine, some of them leak. You can't really predict which are going to be which. Okay, this drawer here is the bane of my existence. Please don't judge me for this. I have not found a way to properly organize all of this and uh, because I'm just, you know, traveling around so much, I, I just haven't really found the impetus or the time to do it. These are a whole bunch of oil fragrances from, mostly from Love Potion Magical Perfumery. So yeah, they're mostly like gourmandy, indie type scents. And these are a couple of little, little Demeter guys. These I got in Nepal. Oops. <laughs> uh, these are oils too, and they're so beautiful. I don't know if you can. Oh no. Okay. Yeah. They're so beautiful. They're like these little glass, little glass bottle. Let me try not to break this. So this is kind of like this is one you can open up and test, which I did, because they are they come like sealed in wax, so have to kind of break it apart in order to in order to actually use it which I haven't done but okay I can't get it out with one hand I'm not gonna try you can kind of see it's like they're they're like these glass just beautiful vials and they smell so good and they last forever yeah these are 
cool. Um, what's over here? Other little decant and more, I think, oils from Love Potion that I just have in there. These are my little decant snippy things. These are more little samples from Love Potion Magical Perfumery. This little cauldron is that was one of their like Halloween editions. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, little snippies. These are other oils. These are from Nantucket Natural Oils. They do some some dupes and some originals. Sorry, I'm <laughs> trying to look, but also like look through this anyway. These are from Body Time. That that's they're all they've all been discontinued, but I I loved Body Time's oils. And yeah, I will eventually do a video on all my oils, so I won't go through all of them. These are some decants that I'm making. To send, and these are some essential oils. Um, I'm gonna leave this drawer now because I'm so embarrassed that I'm showing you this atrocity. Okay. Oh, these are Demeter, guys. Okay, that's it. So that is gonna be it for today, you guys. Thank you so much for spending a little bit of time with me, and thank you for being patient with my inconsistencies. I do aim to do better. I cannot make any promises, but I do aim to do better. Drop me down below what you guys are wearing lately, what are you loving, what are your favorite discoveries, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.